practice prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and in this video we're talking about the Day 6 episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We'll talk about some of the discussion points brought up in the episode, and at the very end I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what's happening next time on the show, uh, on the Day 7 episode. And just to give you a, sen a sense of that, Day 7 is a really rough day for Praxis Prepper in this series, so you don't want to miss that. But before any of this, if you haven't seen the Day 6 episode, there's a link up top or something like that. Click on it and you can know what we're talking about before you watch this episode. Oh, wait a moment. Okay, we'll jump right in. So what's going on in the Day 6 episode is that my character is coming to terms with the fact that his neighbor was a pretty serious prepper. Uh, he had lots of weapons and ammunition, uh, not too much on the food, uh, to the food front of things, but he was definitely preparing for something. And I, I think that the idea that there are preppers around us that we aren't familiar with uh, is something that we all are pretty much aware of. Prepping is kind of kind of a thing that we all keep close to our chest. Now I know I do this channel um, and you know, you know, I share with people what I'm doing and the fact that I do that and I'm putting my face right out here. And I know that there are certain risks r associated with that. I don't believe that one of the risks is that the government's going to come to my house after having scrutinized YouTube and finding out, you know, who I am and they're going to try to steal all my potatoes and rice. Uh, I think that in an extended collapse situation, you know, the government's going to be going to, like, food distribution centers and places with lots of food. They're not going to be, like, scouring the countryside for, you know, a couple bags of rice uh, and things of that nature. So I, I, I'm not really worried about that. But, you know, there are crazy people and things. So, you know, I, I recognize that there are those risks. Um, but I think it's really important to spread these uh, messages uh, to the world because I think the more prepared the world is, the more prepared your community is, the better off things are going to be for you and everyone around you. Uh, you know, in an extended collapse... If your neighbors aren't all a bunch of crazy, desperate people that have no idea what's going on and are just, you know, freaked out of their mind, they're going to be less, less prone to do crazy things like, you know, throw their support behind some despotic nut that is, you know, going to trade all of your, your freedoms for security <laughs> or whatever. You know, I, that, that, we've seen that happen now and then, you know, uh, even, even without total collapses. So um, I think that the, the world's always a better place, and I'm willing to, you know, make a few risks on my part to try to, uh, to make the world a better place. Because I do believe the more people are prepared, the better our society is for everybody. But there are, are risks there, and I, and I think most people are kind of private about it. Plus, prepping's still kind of a weird thing, and I think you get, you get looked at a little bit weird when people know that you're into prepping. Uh, but it's really to all of our detriment, because the more that we can network with other people, the stronger that we are going to be, because in, in this episode, my neighbor is a very different type of prepper than I am. Uh, my neighbor has a lot of weapons and ammunition, and my character has more food, water, uh, you know, shelter kind of concerns. And I think that the kind of prepper that you are says a lot about not necessarily what kind of a person you are, but what, what your life experience has been. I know that for my life experience, I've, I've never lived in an area where I feared for my safety. Maybe if I lived through a collapse, that would change, <laughs> and I would be much more into weapons. Um, but uh, m most of the things that I've gone through in my life have been in relation to maybe not having... Uh, you know, a shelter that I felt was adequate or not, you know, not having access to water or not having access to food. I've never been starving. I've never been homeless, uh, you know, fortunately. But I, you know, in my experiences doing like extended backpacking uh, trips and things of that nature, you know, I've gone through situations where I have not been comfortable because my, my shelter was inadequate or, or I didn't have, enough, you know, as much food as I would like or, you know, my water canteen ran out before I thought it was going to and I don't have access to to any water to purify. So I, you know, again, I've never been through anything like terrifying, like people all over the world are going through all the time. And I'm really thankful for that. But I have gone through experiences that have instilled in me the importance of those things. And I've not really gone through experiences where I've really ever feared for my safety. So, so that's sort of the, the, the tilt, by the way, I've got only one glove on because one of the gloves is kind of sheltering the camera from snow. So it doesn't get a bunch of snow on it. I'm not trying to do a homage to Michael Jackson or anything uh, here. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anyway, my life experiences are what have, um, you know, led me to be the type of prepper that I, that I have been. And that's led me to, you know, wanting to have a really secure house that, you know, can keep me warm on, like, you know, lighting a match will keep my house warm. I like keep plenty of food available, so I always have access to that and, and have access to, to clean drinking water. Uh, what, what do you feel? Do you feel that you have a bend in your prepping? Do you feel that your life experiences have led you to that? What life experiences... Have you experienced that you feel have made you the type of prepper that you are? I would love to hear in the comments below what you, 
you feel has led you to the point where you are, because everyone, I think, has a really interesting story, and I'd really love to hear yours. So now, without any more blabbing about that, here is a little sneak peek of the Day 7 episode. I'm not really sure which clip I'm going to show uh, of it, but just to let you know, like I said before, Day 7 is a rough day for Praxis Prepper, and... Uh, God, what, what clip am I going to show? I don't want to give. I don't want to give it away. I'll give you a sense of why the day is going to be rough in this clip, but I'm, I'm not going to show any of the rough stuff because it's, that's best experienced in the episode itself. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I decided to take the backwoods to uh, to get to town instead of taking any roads. I wanted to stay off the roads as best I could. It took me a little longer, but I think it was a good idea. I had to cut through one wide open field, which made me kind of nervous because I could see some of the big ships way off in the distance, nothing nothing local. But here I am, I'm at the the edge of the, kind of the village green down here. It's like the, kind of, the, I can see the commercial district across the field. And uh, what's disturbing me is that as I was coming in, I was hearing a lot of gunshots, uh, which I guess didn't really bother me at first until I realized I wasn't hearing any alien laser blasts or whatever the hell those things are. So, yeah. It's just, it's just gunshots. So this is, this is people fighting with other people here. Uh. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.